Friends, a very happy and blessed Christmas to you. I hope after all the pre-Christmas activities and preparations, you've managed to keep your joy and your first love of the Christmas story. I've had a number of meetings uh, in the week before Christmas, and so I felt obliged to put up a, a few very twinkly lights and to set up the crib. I'm really grateful actually for these meetings because uh, being on my own with St. James, of course, I might not have bothered. There's always that thought of I've got to put it all away again afterwards. But you know, it was only when I took the crib characters out of the box and held them and looked into their faces uh, and then placed them in the nativity scape that I found myself once again remembering and reimagining the story. I was once again drawn in. Isn't God amazing how he does this? Looking at the figure of Mary, I can only imagine the fear Mary must have experienced when her body began to change and she realized for real she was going to have a baby. When we're going through difficult stuff, it can be really helpful to talk to somebody about it, can't it? Who on earth would Mary have had to talk to? I wonder. Of course she had to tell her mum and dad, but this was going to be a very, very hard conversation. However would they believe that the father of the child was God himself? And how would Joseph, the man she was engaged to, get his head around this? You know, it was only by God speaking to Joseph in a dream that he would realise the truth of the matter. And then, of course, he had to make his response. Would he apply the law, which a righteous man probably would have wanted to do? Um, which, of course, would have meant Mary being stoned to death. Or at the very least, would he have had her banished forever? What would he do? We know he chose to stand by this young, friendless woman who was bearing not his child, but God's child. The pregnancy outside of marriage and Joseph standing by Mary meant that her shame would become his shame. And they would live with whispers and pointing and sneering and the rejection of others all of their lives. I wonder if when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown, whether they actually looked up relatives to stay with and whether it was the case that not one of them would give them shelter. No one would let them, let the shame of this young couple enter their home. Friends, when we think of Christmas, we think of family, don't we? Which means this can be a wonderful time of families reconnecting, or it may be a fraught time of reconnecting. Um, and it can also be a very lonely time for those whose families are scattered or departed this life, or where memories of family are fraught. When Mary, just a young teenager, remember, gave birth to her first child, there was no family as such. There was no mum or dad, no sibling, no friend close by to be her birthing partner, to speak words of encouragement. There was no midwife or doctor, as far as we know. I wonder how alone Mary felt when she so needed family. Yet God provided. There was the man she was betrothed to, somebody she'd never been intimate with, yet a man who was prepared to share her shame, who would give her a name, a dignity and a household. A man who would become her husband and the father of her child, who would stand by her in thick and thin and even bloody his hands for her. As I look again into the crib scene, I just wonder at the intimacy of raw and beautiful love in that stable. I wonder if the shepherds and the wise men weren't simply drawn to the Messiah, the Son of God. Oh, I shouldn't say simply really, should I? But you know what I mean. I wonder if they were drawn into that intimacy of friendship and love. They were drawn into the family of God. I believe with all of my conviction that the nativity scene is where we glimpse into what it means to be part of a wider family that transcends age and gender and ethnicity and tongue and even from one generation to another. And this is why I say with such confidence, 
if you have no family or nowhere to go this Christmas, that's so not true. Go to church. Find the warm place, find the crib and look for your place within it. And look round about you. Inside the crib and beyond, you'll discover a wonderful family you never even knew about. May you have a fabulous Christmas. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, may the radiant love of Christ shine upon you. Amen. <laughs>